Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me in the content routing track. Uh, for those of you who don't know what I look like, refer to that picture above. Uh, you, will, you will recognize me around. Uh, my name is Massey, I'm from the IPNI team, uh, part of Bedrock, uh, and uh, here to talk about content routing. First of all, welcome. Uh, emojis don't show up properly, but that should be a Belgian flag right next to it. Uh, we are in a city famous for its beer and famous for its chocolate. I mean, apart from faster lookup, what else would you really want in life, right? So thank you so much for coming, really appreciate it. So what is content routing? Now, bear with me, because I'm aware of the amount of intellect in the room. We just want to walk through this question together. Um, what really is content routing? Uh, if you look at the previous work, we can, we, can, we can see that, you know, content routing is typically referred to as finding who has a CID. And by, uh, uh, so by content, we'd really mean just a CID or a content identifier. And by who, we mean the peer ID and uh, some addresses. So far, so good, right? This all makes sense. Uh, so this simple operation is the very essence of content routing in motion. That's you know, it's the first stepping stone, pretty exciting. But wait, hold on. What about provide? For contents to be found, I need to provide it somewhere too, right? So sort of providing content to this whole network, telling people that I have a CID, is also part of content routing, right? So let me backtrack a little bit. These two simple operations are the essence of content routing in motion. After we get uh, through turning our famous cat picture into a content addressable data, then the very next step is to tell people about it uh, and have people find where to download that content address data. So far, so good. Great. Hold on. But find sort of doesn't always result in just peer ID and address. You know? Sometimes it has some extra information in it. Right? Is that content routing? Sure. That is content routing too. Right? So, I'm going to backtrack again. These three simple operations. I'm going to stop you right there. There's, sure. So there is, what about find itself, right? Find might not just want extra information, might, might want even less information. Just, just a peer ID, just for speed's sake, right? What about providing content with a UCAN that enables others to provide on your behalf? As we can see, this is progressingly is going more, more and more complicated, and this is kind of a fuzzy area we, uh, we call content routing in general. It gets worse. What about IPNS? Right? IPNS sort of points to a content. It's like an alias to a, to a CID. The characteristic of publishing an IPNS record is very similar to the characteristic of publishing a, a CID. So is IPNS part of content routing? It is all a little bit confusing and overwhelming, right? So we have this fuzzy notion of content routing, which includes many things. It's different depending on the system that is um, uh, interacting with the network. Uh, it is a very, not, not exactly well-defined, but it, it is ex extremely evolving, right? It's, it's changing all the time. So let's, let's take a look back and just look at what, what changes happened in content routing. If you look at 2015, that was when the initial uh, official IP, uh, IPFS was uh, released. The content routing mechanism in the original uh, IPFS was basically made up of two mechanisms. Um, I call it structured lookup, which uses the structured peer-to-peer -peer networks, DHTs and so on. And somewhat an honest structured lookup really hybrid of a structure and a structure if you want to be very uh, pedantic about it. But it, it, it was a, uh, it, it, there's a concept of just gossip and just broadcasting to the network and see what, so see what we get back. Right? These, these were the two fundamental uh, beginning, um, the initial mechanisms for uh, content routing. Then BitSwap 1.1 uh, and 1.2 came about. And these two, uh, these two operations, or these, these two advancements, focused on improving this unstructured way of lookup, right? this gossip mechanism across the network. Uh, then Kubo 05 happened. This is way before my time, so 
I've, I've, did a, I've done a bit of archaeological work, talked to folks that have been here for much longer than I have, and this Kubo 050 introduced uh, significant improvements into the structured way of looking up data. Uh, DHT became much more sophisticated, uh, much more healthy. And then after that, we see a series of work that uh, pushes on that front. We have Hydra boosters, which introduce highly available um, DHT nodes with shared uh, knowledge um, that provide high likelihood of you hitting a node that has significant information about the DHT, uh, such that it would then improve your lookup success significantly. With the great work of Stuarts, uh, specifically Adin, uh, we have a full RT, full routing table implementation. This is a uh, extension of the vanilla, uh, um, uh, vanilla uh, Kedemlia uh, routing table, where uh, rather than having a logarithmic way of finding uh, uh, peers by uh, you know number of hops being logarithmic to the size of the network. You basically try and um, store the full state of the network in the, in the hope that you will only need a single hop to find out who has the information. That significantly improves the speed of both lookup and providing it. Remember, if we refer back to the previous uh, slides, we have this mixture of all these operations that are all included under this umbrella of content routing. So then, then something really interesting happened. This, the very beginning of swappable content routing, this is what I call it. And this swappable content routing enabled um, just colla uh, 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 collaboration and enabled connecting multiple content routing systems together, beginning with just one. Right? So we basically took the DHT and took the previous structured and unstructured things that we had, and we wrapped it around APIs that then allows us to seamlessly exchange, uh, replace them with another mechanism, right? And the point was to introduce tuning knobs. This is, what, this, is, this is one of the first instances of introducing these tuning knobs that allows implementers, allows people that are interested in sharing information. And remember, we do all of this to have content address data in motion to really optimize for their use case. Reframe evolved into HTTP delegated routing, a much simpler API um, with much more um, focus on human readability. Uh, specifications came out. This is now shipped into shipped in Kubo uh, and allows and has reasonable defaults, uh, which allows you to integrate your own routing system into it. Uh, the routing system that makes sense to your uh, system, to your network, without having to pay the cost of the routing system that should work across a wide area network. Right. This is pretty exciting. After that, IPNI happened. This is the beginning of bridging gap, gaps between the network. So before IPNI, remember, we, we have multiple content routing networks. We've got IPFS, which uh, has data, uh, uh, content address data. We have Filecoin, which has significantly more content address data with much, uh, much different characteristics associated to it, like, for example, longevity of the storage. But these two networks are completely separate. And the reason for them being separate is that the data in Filecoin and other content address uh, networks is just massive in comparison. There is a huge amount of it, and the existing sort of content routing systems uh, are not really designed for that type of scale and publication. That's where IPNI comes in, to bridge this gap by making explicit design decisions that we talk later on today about, in order to bridge this gap between the two networks. With the birth of IPNI, you now can look up content address data full stop. Uh, let's, let's pause there and think about that a little bit. This is, the, this is the thing we've been uh, striving for. It's certainly not the destination. It's just the beginning. We are just scratching the surface. But we are delivering every day more and more on the promise that, hey, if I have the CID, I just want the content back. And I want to be able to retrieve it and so on. So for the retrieval, we touched on that a little bit yesterday on um, uh, data transfer track. Uh, but this development is pretty exciting. right? We, we have bridged the gap. We have faster lookup across the board. 
with some explicit design decisions. And now uh, we are starting to focus on concerns that, uh, to me, are cross-cutting, like, for example, privacy. And this is a pretty uh, exciting advancement in this whole uh, evolutionary uh, timeline of content routing. Because we're not so much worried about just making it work such that, such that we can find the data, no matter what the latency. We are finding the data, we are finding the data fast, and now we are focusing on the sort of solutions that are cross-cutting across any content routing system, no matter what, like privacy. Uh, in preserving the reader's privacy, they would be preserving the writer's privacy. This is just the very beginning, but it is, a, it is an extremely uh, exciting time. There is one extra data point here to um, point out. Uh, the lines in the graph, they're not uh, linear. Uh, more than half of this stuff happened in the last three years. Think about that for a second. This is an acceleration of uh, work and advancement in the, in the area of content routing just in the last three years. That is. That is something notable, right? So what are the evolutionary trends here? Because really, that's what we, talk, we, want, we care about when you're looking at a timeline, right? What are the trends here? Lookup is getting faster. Both uh, lookup and providing is getting faster. We are becoming significantly more scalable when it comes to making content uh, address data available full stop. Uh, we have systems that accept uh, content, routing, uh, content address data by the billion and uh, in return provide you with uh, sub 10 millisecond lookup latency. We have increasingly more um, uh, tuning knobs that allow you to share content routing mechanisms and swap them with, with another system uh, such that we stay true to that promise of giving us it, find me information, giving us it, tell people about it without having to force the users to learn about really complicated stuff. Uh, we are increasingly uh, going towards a world that has interconnected networks right now. Uh, finding data from IPFS and Filecoin together is old news now. And to me, that is an exciting success, right? It really should be relevant to the user where the data is and really should, we really should focus on how the user can push data and get the data back. And like I mentioned, we are uh, entering an era of cross-cutting solutions that are um, agnostic of the content routing algorithm or mechanism itself, and more focused on properties that a sound content routing system should possess for the good of the users, like privacy. So if I want to sum it up in one sentence, uh, this, is, this is what I came up with, which is we are moving towards a fluid content routing. What does fluid content routing mean? Imagine a glass of water. You pour it in different uh, glasses, and it takes the shape of the glass. Right? So this content routing becomes more flexible and becomes more sort of ubiquitous, uh, a, a cross-cutting layer that has distinction, uh, distinct boundaries, but it's, it's less about, uh, but forces users less about um, knowing how it actually works and more about its true functionality. And to me, that is something, really something to celebrate. Uh, it's credit to the work of all the community that's been uh, happening over the last uh, 10 years or so. I think uh, it is certainly something to celebrate. So what does it look like today? This content routing network that we're talking about, what does it look like today? This is the diagram that I put together to kind of show you the landscape of content routing today. We have users on the left-hand side. These users talk through the network by uh, uh, IPFS implementations like Kubo. They may be using uh, the gateway to find information. Uh, they also may be contacting IPNI uh, directly uh, to find information. We have this mist of information that still exists, undeniably, uh, which is BitSwap. Uh, unstructured, you just have to be in the party to see what's happening, right? Uh, unstructured, Resilient in specific use cases, not so much when it comes to you know, bulk uh, publishing and bulk um, lookup, but certainly there still. We have uh, Hydra nodes still around. Those, these are those red dots that you see. Uh, we go through the changes that has happened in Hydra's a little bit uh, in the IPNI talk, uh, but Hydra's existed and now there are 
uh, they're reduced a little bit, but they're still around. Um, we have direct connection between Kubo nodes now into other delegated routing systems such as IPNI, uh, which is also exciting. Uh, this was uh, shipped since Kubo uh, 018. Um, uh, so the role of Hydras in terms of propagating search through multiple routing systems is not as important anymore. Uh, and you know, I also find that really interesting because anything that makes any of these nodes or collection of uh, any single node more important in a collective network, to me, is, is a really welcoming development. On the IPNI side, we have uh, cultivated a platform that enables a whole new array of uh, connected content routing data. Uh, this is something that uh, would have not been possible with the sort of uh, design decisions that we've explicitly made in IPNI. Um, th this is a bulk uh, content that is provided by uh, providers like NFT Storage, Penata, and so on. Uh, we also have IPNI deeply integrated into uh, storage providers, uh, Filecoin storage providers. It is it's been integrated into Boost from day one. Uh, and it was integrated into Filecoin uh, in its early uh, creation. And we are starting to see a whole new way of interaction with this whole system, which to me kind of points back to that idea of fluid content routing that I touched on earlier. And that is the use case of RIA, uh, which is using the decentralized Saturn network uh, to then look up information using uh, Lassie. Uh, and I think that is also pretty exciting. So what are we going to cover today? Today, we're going to take a closer look at, at latest developments in this big piece in the middle. Uh, then we're going to look at what is IPNI, how it is advanced, uh, where is it going, just understanding the direction there. Uh, we're going to have a break, and after that, we're going to come back and talk about those cross-cutting concerns that I talked about, like the privacy, uh, and how this cross-cutting concerns that are putting the user at the center of this interaction are affecting other routing systems like DHD and IPNI. And we're going to wrap it up with uh, a talk on how we, can, how we are moving towards a, a more decentralized uh, IPNI network uh, by removing barriers in terms of exchanging information about what is available uh, and also enabling other nodes in the network to get that information and become up to date. So this is sort of the overview of the uh, track. I hope you're as excited as I am. Uh, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Guy to tell us a little bit more about what DHT has been up to in terms of scaling that ability to provide information. Thank you. <laughs> 